Chapter 8 is a short one, but important in adding realism through shadows. I start by creating the chapter's nUnit test class. This requires making all the parameters that are passed into the object's lighting method. Calculating lighting is the same for all objects once I have the eye, normal, and lighting information, which is why it is in my base class. Technically, I don't need to pass in the normal, I could calculate that from the position and call the class's overridden getNormal method. Maybe I'll make that change in the future. What is added to the lighting method is the boolean value in shadow. If the object is inside a shadow, no lighting information from that light source should be calculated. The second test is going to make sure that when we are calculating a point in a shadow, that we don't calculate the lighting information of the scene for that point. It is going to rely on the method isShadowed, which I haven't yet made to return a boolean value. This will later be passed to the lighting method to abort calculations of lighting early. I get tired of all the alphabetical ordering of my tests, and from now on I'm going to use the system of putting a T and numbers next to it so that everything is nice and ordered. I can have more than one light, so I need to iterate through each light and specifically abort that light's calculations if we are in a shadow. This test is relatively easy to understand. We are going to create a vector to the light source from the point that we are interested in, and if we intersect anything between the point and the light source, we know we are blocked and we are in shadow. This will work for opaque objects, but I'm sure the book will have us revise that when we get into transparencies. Because I'm using tests that might run in sequence, and using static variables at times, I create some methods to easily clear out all the lights and ray objects from the scene. Now it's time to test these new shadow methods within the context of the entire project pipeline, to make sure we are getting the right color results. I take a few minutes to try to remember how I exactly integrated lighting calculations into my scene, and how they were integrated within the Ray Object class as well. This last test is going to evaluate shadows when objects have been transformed using matrices. We also need to be aware that due to floating point imprecisions, objects might self-shadow themselves, creating a noisy image of random shadows. To overcome this, the book recommends pushing the point of evaluation out along the surface normal by a very small amount. Now it's time to see a rendered result. Here we can clearly see the shadow noise across the image. This is because I forgot to use the pushed out point in my calculations. Now that fixes some things, but the back wall still appeared noisy. 
So I assume it has something to do with the distance being calculated and the floating point rounding errors. So I go ahead and modify my epsilon value in my utility class, which is used for comparing all floating point numbers, which apparently solves the problem. And that's it for what would appear to be a complex problem, shadows. But in reality, it was quick and easy to implement. Next is chapter 9, where I get to see about refactoring my code and making things a bit more generic and universal. I think I've done a pretty good job so far with my code at anticipating future needs, so I hope I don't have to make too many changes. If you're following along, let me know how you're doing in your own computer language. I'll see you all next time. So long. Goodbye.